Good evening. Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of July 13th, 2017. Uh, this is our one meeting this month. My name is Bill Dwight. I'm the City Council President and I'll be presiding tonight. Uh, before we convene the meeting, we uh, will open the floor for public comment. Um, that <laughs> we have no one signed up though. But uh, Okay, so the rules under public comment are you're granted three minutes to speak. Uh, when you step up, please state your name and address and for the public record. And uh, we ask that you respect the decorum of the chamber and not defame any individuals other than ourselves. You're welcome to defame us because we're public figures. If you're, if you're <coughs> mad at your neighbor, you can complain about your neighbor as long as you don't name your neighbor. Um, and let's see, and all that said, I don't have anyone signed up, so is anyone interested in speaking in public comment at this point? Wait, someone's coming in the door? No. Donna didn't. Yeah. Um, I think Mr. Willard wanted to speak to Mr. Willard, do you want to speak? About an item that's on the agenda later on tonight, I believe. You, we could make, if, if it's specific to an agenda item, we can actually uh, recognize him to speak during that time, or? What's your preference, Mr. Willer? Would you like to speak for the three minutes allotted now? Early or late, or probably very late, because I've never been here. These affairs give me a little chance to get organized. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And there's Lisa, thank God. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, all right. So, uh, we have anyone want to speak in public comment? Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask the administrative assistant to please call the roll. Councillor Bidwell? Here. Councillor Kearney? Present. Councillor Dwight? Here. Councillor Klein? Here. Councillor Labarge? Present. Councillor Murphy? Here. Councillor Nash? Here. Councillor Donald? Here. Councillor Sherr? Here. Okay. Uh, we have a quorum, and so we may convene, and our first uh, item on the agenda is a poll petition hearing. Uh, this is item 17.343, it's poll petition for Elm Street at St. John's Public and this is the public hearing that was announced in accordance with the provisions of Section 22, Chapter 166 uh, of the General Laws. A public hearing will be held here at 212 Main Street at Northampton, Massachusetts at 7.05, which we still have three minutes. Um, so we'll... Well, this... Oh, I, I'm sorry. This... I, I'm reversing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. This is me announcing that there will be a meeting uh, held on August 17th, and this is a poll petition at St. John's Church. And as I said, it's here, and this is on the petition National Grid to erect poles and wires upon, along, or under, or across one or more public ways here in Northampton. Um, so we're going to wait three minutes, now two minutes, because the uh, public uh, hearing was, yes. Can we do one minute announcements? Yeah, why don't we do that? This is when there we go. say there we, we have go. none. We'll leap to one minute announcements. Maybe one and a half minutes. Okay. Does anyone have any one minute announcements? Oh, come on. Oh, come <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody must be able to fill some time here. Uh, okay. <laughs> no events. Oh, not so right. uh, So, Cutchins uh, program is having its uh, annual barbecue. Uh, neighbors are welcome. Everybody's welcome. It'll be next Wednesday at 5 o'clock at the Cutchins campus on Pomeroy Terrace. How was that? That was excellent. So, uh, oh, now, now we've got it. <laughs> now. <laughs> Councilor Bidwell and Councilor Shera. Um, well, I realize this will come before our, our, our next council meeting. On uh, Tuesday, August 1st at 5 p.m., um, there's going to be a dedication of a, of a bench that has recently been installed along the along the Mill River as a, as a, as a donation <coughs> by a private party on, on land donated by private parties. And it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a lovely thing and there will be announcements about it and we'll invite people to come and celebrate. It's, it's sort of a, it's a, it's a good thing for our trail system, it's a good thing for our, for our greenway system and it's a nice example that's being set by, by, uh, by, by private individuals who are stepping forward to do this. <coughs> so that's the, the first at five o'clock, stay attention for details. Okay. Dr. Shara. Um, the new and growing organization, Northampton Neighbors, is having a, a picnic this summer. Um, so this is Wednesday, August 16th from four to eight at Look Park's Willowbrook Pavilion. 
Um, it says, free, come bring some food to share, bring your grandchildren and other children or <coughs> anyone you want to bring. Um, so that's, again, that's August 16th, 4 to 8 p.m. at the Willow Brook Pavilion in Lip Park. Okay. Also, it's worth noting that I think it's July 22nd, the <coughs> summer stroll is scheduled for downtown. Uh, the uh, drive through on Main Street will be closed from King Street, I believe, up to the Academy. I'm not sure. Um, and will be become a public walking mall. Uh, lots of city vendors, food, uh, entertainment. It's similar, as you may have remembered, the holiday stroll over the winter. This one will be a little less inclement. It'll be, they'll hopefully, we, I don't know, basically the weather the way it's been, I'm not so sure that's true, but there at least won't be snowing, I think. What so. Time, what time is that coming? Oh, see, you were going to ask me that. I just see, I'm just pulling this out of my hat. I don't know. It's, it's six to nine. Six <laughs> to nine? You're making that up, or is that, you know that for a fact? Okay, six, <laughs> six to up. nine. <laughs> I think so. Downtown, downtown Northampton. Well, look at the time. It's 7.06, so we can have a public hearing. So this is a public hearing regarding a poll petition that's received for, by, from National Grid regarding Masonic Street, and this is in accordance with the provisions of Section 22, Chapter 166 of the General Laws uh, public hearing held here uh, on the petition for National Grid to erect poles upon, along, under, or across one or more public ways here in the city of Northampton. Uh, I'll accept a motion to open the, the hearing. Open Make a motion. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor of opening the public hearing, please say aye. 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 Um, so first up, uh, let's hear from the proponents. Lisa's here. Good evening. I'm Council Lisa Jasinski with National Grid, and we are here looking for permission to put in underground wires. Essentially, the wires are going to go, it's primary wire, and it's going to go from the north side of the Verizon building um, up to the Masonic Street parking lot and into the park, and, and then from the street to the back of the parking lot to meet up with an existing transformer. It's really kind of to tie a loop in. We have, uh, we have an overhead feed that comes up Masonic Street. It stops right in front of the Packards building, and then it goes underground to a couple transformers. This will kind of make it a full loop, and if there ever is uh, trouble in the future, it's just, it just helps to continue power because we have a second way to feed it. We can back feed some power. And we've had some issues with uh, the wires especially. And that last overhead section, um, which, uh, you know, if, the, if people need to get up there and do any work on the building, they really can't. They can't get scaffolding up. It's the proximity doesn't um, allow any of that to take place. <coughs> um. Um, do you plan to discontinue the overhead lines at some point? No. I think that what we can do, though, is if, if there's a need to work, say, on that particular building, what, what we've had to do, because, you know, it's old construction and, you know, th rules change, um, but it's, it's really a protected underground cable that we have on the, uh, on the top of the poles because that's, that's what we can fit. Um, we wouldn't get rid of that because the loop is great. If there's a problem in the underground somewhere, we can... You know, we can kind of back feed from one point, you know, to another. It, it really is the source of power for a good chunk of Main Street over here um, between, you know, on the end of Masonic Street and heading, heading down this way. Um, so there wouldn't, there wouldn't be a good reason for us to get, get rid of that at this point. And just one other question. How long do you expect that construction would take? To, or would you have to be digging? And, uh they, we will. It will be our civil contractors that dig, and it's probably a few days in the street. It's going to be. It's going to run pretty close to the side, the, uh, the um, sidewalk on the Verizon side, you know, the street. There's a water line there, so that you know, when we're, it's more specific. I met with the DPW this morning, and um, so when we really kind of find out where that water line is, because that will be marked out when we call in our dig safe, just you know how close to the sidewalk will be in the road, but it'll be pretty close. Thank you, mm -hmm. Council the Barge. <coughs> Looking at. Um at the review from the DPW records, mm -hmm. so all the requirements that they are requesting, you're going to make sure that's going to be completed. That's correct. I spoke with um, Dave Valletta and Felix from the DPW this morning, and, and they, have, they have good communication with a contractor that we use. So, Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, anyone opposing or have questions or comments relative to this poll petition? Proponents. Does, does that include proponents? And, and proponents. Are there any other proponents? Are there any? Is there anyone else who would wish to speak to this issue? I'll accept a motion. motion to close the hearing. The public hearing. Make a motion. All those in favor of closing the public hearing, please say aye. 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 Can I add one thing? Sure. Just before I leave, I do know that there was a customer that had called. They were curious as to the time frame. There are a couple more things that have to be. Um, taken care of before we can put this on the schedule and part of that is that we we request actually an easement in within the parking lot itself so it's a petition in this in this public way and then an easement so that's still in the works between our legal department and the city and so so the easement has to be established before work can begin correct correct so that's you the don't list. know the timeline relative I, I don't I did email our legal department unfortunately I did not receive that she might not have been there today to do you have the uh, contact information? Um, no, but I think I can get that from okay. PM Powers. Okay, and you'll you'll be able to share with them. I will. I'll know. give them a call and and just let and speak to them about that. Okay. Terrific. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, and now we should actually we can't unfold this into the um, consent agenda, so we should vote on this now. So I would move to grant the permit. Second it. Okay. Motions made to grant the permit and seconded. Any discussion on the granting of the permit? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, Your Honor, any communications, proclamations? No. Okay. Uh, next up, we have a resolution. This is a resolution to support the culture of civility here in the city of Northampton, <coughs> and it is uh, upon the recommendation of the Human Rights Commission. Item 17.360, this is a resolution supporting the culture of civility in the city of Northampton. Whereas there is an increase in Northampton and around the country of bias, motivated name calling and language that demeans people based on who they are and where they're from. And whereas the New York Times, Boston Globe and other national media outlets around the country have responded to this increase by inviting people to report such incidences. Incidents, I'm sorry. And whereas we wholeheartedly support freedom of speech as the cornerstone of a healthy democracy, we also believe that respect for each other is as vital to a healthy community as it is, as is the preservation of free speech. And whereas we believe speech that denigrates people for who they are, even if legally protected speech, undermines the sense of safety of those who are targeted and also tears the fabric of a civilized, respectful community. And whereas we believe the responsibility for creating community climate respectful to all falls not on not with the police <coughs> or other law enforcement authorities, but with every single one of us who commit to respecting each other and supporting people targeted by hate slurs when we witness them. And whereas in this city, we believe everyone has a right to feel safe walking down the street. And whereas that while we protect free speech, we believe this with speech comes responsibility. And whereas we call upon all people in Northampton in the Northampton community to commit to not using hate speech, including racist slurs, homophobic name calling, sexist cat calls, and other forms of personal degradation. And whereas free speech is not a license to demean others, other members of our community, to threaten the safety of individuals and the security of the community as a whole. And whereas if we witness such incidents, we will remember that the responsibility for a respectful and civilized community falls upon each one of us. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Human Rights Commission and the Mayor of Northampton will invite all members of the Northampton community to join in a civility pledge, signifying an intention to not demean other people. And the pledge is, as a member of the Northampton community, I acknowledge that bias incidents and acts of hate destroy the fabric of our community, threaten the personal and collective safety of residents and visitors to our city, and can escalate into criminal activity. I pledge to support a civil Northampton by refraining from disparaging other people based on who they are and by attending to those who are the targets of such acts as part of a community effort to neutralize bigotry and to support people who are marginalized and, and disenfranchised. I'll accept a motion and put this on the floor. Make a motion. Okay. Motion's made and seconded. There are representatives here from the um, Human Rights Commission who would like to speak to this. Hi, I'm Laura Loisel. I'm Booker Bush. Mm -hmm. Sorry. 
I don't want to stand by There you go, now. Booker. You're on camera now. Okay. Uh, well, I thought we were going to read the resolution, but you I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I, no, that's okay. I stole your thunder. I'm sorry. No, no, you didn't. But okay. I. But uh, we wanted to ask for your endorsement of this. Um, this came, we've had a number of meetings where we've discussed it and um, as, as a commission. And um, we feel like we wanted to put out into the community the need to be nicer to each other, basically. Boil it, boil it down to simple language. And, um, and that might sound like a silly thing to do, but I think it just sort of sets an intention. And I think, you know, we wanted to recognize that there have been some incidents of nastiness and that that's not the community we want to live in. Um, yeah, I, it's hard to add more to that. It's um, we when we began this process, we were hitting. We heard informally from uh, the chief of police that there was a concern that there were a growing number of incidents, um, and that people were witnessing incidents that made them uncomfortable, both the the recipient of the difficult speech as well as people witnessing the difficult speech. And that's why we wanted to come to the idea of having a pledge and a formal document that sort of says where we stand as a city. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that this actually disseminates to um, schools, churches, uh, the temples and the community and other places where people might take this pledge and then begin to talk about what might they do if, I'm gonna say what was difficult for us in this, when we did this pledge is, what does it mean to stand and support somebody who's being victimized? Um, that's a very dangerous and difficult thing. Many of the schools actually have education about how to be a witness, um, how to support people, um, and how to do that. And I guess I'm personally hoping that if people take this pledge that they would maybe take further steps to understand how they would support somebody who they saw being um, harassed or victimized. And we have some ideas about how we would launch this we and we were hoping that you'll uh, endorse it today and I don't know if you need to take a second vote but in August and that we want to really get it going in September invite the schools to take part as you said um, houses of worship um, maybe have copies of it in the library um, maybe have I mean we're gonna be meeting and sort of figuring out the plan but these are all the ideas we've been talking about um, we don't have a budget, so it's going to be just low cost, but maybe announcing it on the steps of City Hall. And we hope to start, like, in the way that, you know, when you do a capital campaign, you get people signed on ahead. We hope to get some community leaders on board ahead of time and then hopefully get a lot of people in the community signing on. Um, because we felt like after we had some conversations with Chief Casper, um, we just realized, you know, this isn't really on the police. This is really something that's like kind of before you get to the police. This is about how we talk to each other in a community. And um, it's not about political correctness. It's just about decency. So, Leo, if you have any questions. Yeah, do you have any uh, does the council have any questions? The, um, there are, I know there are actually probably a number of people locally that do bystander training. Um, I know Safe Passage in particular has, uh, you, there's access to people opportunity for people to access that would be helpful because as you say this is a difficult it's a difficult point in which you try to figure out where you can be helpful and where you actually may put others at risk and that um, and <coughs> the other question was you answered actually was about how you plan on going about promoting the pledge and and how that would be administered or main, you know managed and promoted yeah, we, we haven't worked out all those logistics about what will happen to pieces of paper that are signed or if it's going to be all online. So we'll have to work all that out. Um, yeah, so it's basically a public education campaign, but basically, like, are you willing to say, it's pretty basic, you know, we won't, we'll be decent to each other. That's really, really what it is. So you're asking the council to endorse a document calling for decency? Yeah. <laughs> and then also we're going to ask you to sign it. <laughs> yeah, so or, in a sense, take the pledge. Yeah. <laughs> and to take the pledge as well. By, by voting in the, in the affirmative, that would constitute us uh, also taking the pledge? Would that? We would invite all of you as individuals to take the pledge. Okay. Okay. 
Councilor Shara? Um, just piggybacking on what Councilor Grant was saying, this passage <coughs> does have a bystander training called Say Something that I took in uh, December, maybe, um, which is great. And I'm sure they'd love to you know, be part of your rollout of this and mm. get more people involved in that program, which is, it's, I think it was a six week program once a week. And we I did that too, yeah. Oh, That's a great idea. Yeah. <coughs> Any other comments or questions? Uh, okay, you prepared to take a vote on this? Yeah. Uh, how about we do a roll call on this one? We don't normally do roll calls on resolutions, but at least well, you'll get Can I just say one thing? Sure. Uh, Councilor Klein is a uh, liaison to the Human Rights Commission. Do you want to say anything? Because you were a part of all those discussions. <laughs> I feel like you covered it all, okay. thanks. Okay, all right, so let's do a roll call on this then. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Dodd? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Gabriel? Yes. Uh, that passes unanimously in the first reading. Um, our next meeting will be in August for the second meeting. Should get you in time before Christmas. Okay. <laughs> should, should we come back for that? I don't see why you would have to unless there's okay. some controversy developed in the interim and that they're uh, challenge or other councils may be changing their mind. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have the consent agenda. And in contained in there is uh, these are appointments with positive recommendations uh, by the Committee on City Services on uh, July 10th of this year. First item was to approve 17.322 as an appointment of the CPC. Jeff Jones is Housing Authority representative to the, uh, the Community Preservation Committee. The term uh, starting July uh, 1st, 2017, expiring June 30th, 2020. Also, we have to approve item 17.336 as an appointment to the Historical Commission. Uh, Craig Della Pena of 62 Chestnut Street, Florence, of the term starting September 2016, expiring June 2019, and this is a reappointment. And then also approval for item 17.345 of various appointments to committees, uh, the Board of Health, Suzanne Smith of 134 State Street, Northampton, the term starting March 2017, expiring June 2020, a reappointment. Board of Registrars, Catherine Kay. 136 South Main Street in Florence, term to start June 2017, expiring April 2019. And this is replacing the unexpired term of Janet Larson. The Council on Aging, Catherine Service of Nine Butler Place in Northampton Street, uh, in Northampton, I'm sorry, uh, term starting April 2017, expiring June 2020. This is a reappointment. And the Housing Partnership, Edgardo Cancel of 19D Hampshire Heights, Northampton, the term to start. Uh, June 2017, expiring June 2020. A new appointment, this is filling a vacancy. And then Rebecca Lockwood, uh, 46 Forest Glen Drive in Florence, term to start June 2017, expiring June 2020. And it's a new appointment filling a vacancy. Also, item 17.356 is a petition for secondhand dealer's license for Birdhouse Music at 164 uh, Main Street. And uh, Glenn Alper is the petitioner. And then also to approve the minutes of June 15, 2017, also to approve uh, the minutes of June 15, 2017 executive session, and also item 17.361, uh, appointments to various committees to refer to the Committee on City Services. Um, and there is, hang on a second, uh, these are for the Arts Council, Ellen uh, Augarten of 253 Crescent Street, Northampton, the term to begin July 2017, expiring June 2020, a reappointment. The Human Rights Commission, Lori Wiesel, who you just saw, uh, 46 Grand Avenue in Northampton, uh, North, uh, the term to begin June 2017, expiring June 2020, uh, reappointment. And Parks and Recreation Commission, Karen Foster, 155 Grove Street in Northampton, term starting July 2017, expiring June 2020, and that's a new appointment filling of agency. I'll accept a motion on the consent agenda. Second. <coughs> in second. All those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> okay. Now we come to actually an unusual thing. Uh, we're, you know, this has never come up during my tenure as a counselor, and I don't I think any counselors here. No. But this is an election 
of sorts. It is an appointment for the interim city clerk. The, uh, this is in accordance with the city charter, section C, uh, C5-1. And whenever a vacancy occurs in the office of the city clerk, the city council shall within 30 days following the date of the vacancy act to fill the vacancy. Um, Wendy Mazza, as of June 30th, is no longer serving as city clerk. She um, submitted her resignation. And as such, we, the time span's too short to conduct a special election. So now it falls upon us to <coughs> choose an interim that will serve until um, a person is elected in a citywide election to serve in that capacity and until that person is reappointed. Um, the process by which we do this is that we have an introductory statement by each candidate. Um, the candidates will uh, present in alphabetical order by last name. There will be questions from the city councilors. Uh, nominations will follow. A uh, roll call vote will follow that and then an announcement of the winning candidate. At the end of the meeting, the uh, oath of office will be administered by our local justice of the peace here, uh, Councilor Murphy, who, will, who has that authority. So that said, um, are there applicants for this position in attendance today? We have, I know we have one. <laughs> I know we have one. Are there any other applicants? Hmm? There were two names that were forwarded to there the two, city yeah, council. There are two names that were forwarded, but uh, I see. And, and one was not present at the city services um, for the vetting, but we did forward both names. And you, without council. recommendation? Neutral recommendation. Neutral recommendation. Um, well, if we're going to do alphabetical order, I know one candidate is here, and that would be Pam. So, uh, so Pam, you get to go up <coughs> there. Right to the peas. I'm going to vote on the interim clerk too. Yeah, so we go. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hello. <clears throat> My name is Pamela Powers, and I live at 105 North Main Street in Florence. I want to thank the City Council for entertaining my resume and qualifications for the interim position of City Clerk. I want to start off first by saying thank you to Wendy Mazza for her 45 years of service. Her dedication and commitment to the City will certainly be missed. The institutional knowledge she takes with her will never be replaced. Her retirement left the office with a combi combined total of almost eight years experience. It's up to the council to pick the interim. I think that's your plan tonight. And I'm willing, quite frankly, to be that person. I've submitted my letter of interest, my resume, and I spoke to the Committee on City Services. I'm a known entity for, to the council, and I've worked with you for more than three years now. I bring to this job a long history of education and training, all of which is easily applicable to the clerk's role. You've witnessed the transferable skills that I have employed in the day-to-day -day work that I do as the clerk to the City Council. You've seen the introduction of a simple numbering system for legislative items that has, that ha has come out of my experience as a manager in a document control center. It's a great tool, albeit simple, to follow the flow of items and to track the progress of work <coughs> that the Council does. I've given the city interactive agendas that provide a more transparent view of what the city council does. I've worked in nine elections. We've spent weeks in the clerk's office building up to and getting ready for the election. I worked the entire day on election day and, and also uh, helped in the closeout procedures. My quality background implores me that there should be established procedures in every office. I've developed a city manual with references for the city, for the city council offices, office with references about key aspects of the job that I do. I pride myself on making sure that everyone who comes into the council office 
gets the attention they need, and more importantly, the information that they are looking for. I have a commitment to Northampton. I live in Northampton, I work here in the city, and my kids attend Northampton Public Schools. I'm involved in the community. I'm proud to be a Girl Scout leader, formerly of Troop 346. I've also been the secretary for the St. Patrick's Association in Northampton, president of the school's parent-teacher organization, and a registrar for youth athletics. I'm committed to the success of the clerk's office, and I will continue to give the citizens of Northampton what I have demonstrated for the past six years. Tonight, I'm asking for your approval to be named as the interim city clerk. And that's it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. Uh, questions? Councilor uh, Council LaBarge. Yes. Um, <coughs> Pam, thank you very much for coming to City Service on Monday. I asked you questions, and I thank you for your reply back. I have a couple more questions, mm -hmm. and I know you'll be able to answer them. We have heard for I don't know how long, and you have too, Councilor Dwight, about the city clerk's office being short one staff person, okay? My question is, because we could go ahead without a problem of training staff, rotating them, Mm -hmm. All right, so that they could do city clerk's position, do register of voters. Do you believe in that cross training? I don't. <clears throat> I don't think that there's an office in the city now that can't survive without cross training. I think it's imperative that everyone be able to replace somebody else, especially an office that's open every day, that the city is open, um, and. You know, having having seen the office be reduced by one person um, suggests that that's something that we should be doing. Yes, so absolutely. What you're saying is then it is not necessary to fill that position, correct? Well, if the mayor would like to add that position back into the budget, I would certainly not, you know, not uh, dispute okay. that. Um, but but um, I think that there has been. A demonstrated, um, you know, a demonstration that that the office has survived with four people, and I think that there's more that that um, the clerks want to learn, and I think that there's more that they they can do. Yes. Second question, and that's it. All right. Um, I believe myself, and I'm talking for myself. Then I'm going to ask you. I believe that, and I've always said this. Mary Claire Higgins, our mayor, our former mayor, wanted to go ahead and change the city clerk's position through the charter. I think you can recall that, Councillor Dwight, of making the city clerk's position not to be elected by the voters. How do you feel about that? Because I agree with it 100 percent, and I'd love to see that happen because I feel that the mayor should have control of that department also. So uh, it's not really a fair question. I, I mean, at this point, because I'm not filling the term as an elected official, and I don't think that that, you know, that could possibly happen um, until, you know, somebody was named as, as the official city clerk. Um, I don't really have an opinion. I think it should be left up to the voters to decide. Um, the office will perform the functions regardless. There are a lot of um, duties that are performed as a result, of, you know, to fulfill state statutes that, you know, that, that have no uh, bearing on how the position is filled. There are some advantages to both. There's uh, some disadvantages to both. I don't really have a concern either way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, Councilor Shara. Um, thank you for your willingness to uh, do this interim position. Um, I have sort of a broader question. So right at this moment in time, voter information requests are an important topic that's being discussed um, at the federal to state level, but here in this office, in every city clerk office, voter information is also held. 
So um, what's your take on privacy and protection of this information? And how, how would you handle or how would you approach what could be an intimidating request from, say, a federal commission or, or from someone from outside asking for voter information for Northampton? Well, I, that certainly has been a topic of discussion. Um, there is certain information that's, that cannot be divulged. Uh, you know, there's, there's uh, state regulations about that. Um, so certainly that type of information would not be shared. Um, and, you know, I, I would definitely have to abide by, um, you know, the, the, uh, the requirements of whatever was given to me in terms of uh, uh, from, from the state um, voting, uh, state elections. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not really, um, you know, I'm not really aware of what concerns there could be um, by providing information that is um, available to, say, candidates. Um, that would be the type of information that I would be looking to supply. Um, I'm not, uh, you know, not really sure what other types of information that would be sought beyond that. So it's, it's uh, not, I'm not sure. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Councilor Bidwell. Uh, I wanted to join in thanking you for being willing to Thank step you. up in this uh, interim position. We would be left in the lurch otherwise. Um, I also wanted to thank you for the preparation you put into your, your, uh, your appearance at our, at, our, at our City Services Committee. The, your, your, your summary of the vital duties of the office, your make ready checklist for the upcoming election uh, was, was, was very impressive and I think it bodes well for the uh, uh, level of detail and preparedness you would, you would, you would, you would, you would bring to the office. So, so thank you for the thoughtfulness you've given to this transition, uh, uh, assuming it's a, it's a transition to you. As this is an interim position, that doesn't give you much flexibility in significant changes within the office, but of course, the, for a lot of citizens in Northampton, the city clerk's office is the customer service desk. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and which has enjoyed actually very good customer service, customer relations with people who do come in that uh, they feel comfortable in, in transacting there in the city, in the city clerk's mm -hmm. office. Um, I have no doubt that you have every intention of f uh, keeping that tradition going, but do you Absolutely. have any notions about how in your interim capacity should you become elected, uh, enhance that, the customer service experience? Well, uh, I'm not sure how much time it would take, but certainly, um, you know, trying to become a more efficient office is always um, you know, a goal that I strive for. Um, I, I think, you know, there are, there, in terms of the day-to-day -day transactions, you know, a lot of it is um, the amount of time it takes to get someone, someone's request processed is dependent upon the, the systems, per se. Um, but as time goes on, there's, there's other things that can reduce um, the amount of time it takes to transact certain things. And I plan on mapping out those processes and looking at ways to cut time. Um, Wendy's office did a great job when I was there and, you know, I think even after I left, um, at providing same-day service. That will continue. Um, I did notice that the office is a little cap tapped out right now. Um, you know, they did put up some signs to suggest that there may not be same-day service until um, an interim is appointed. So I, I, that's one of the first things that I would like to work on is getting back to that point. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Could you I'm just sorry. repeat the <coughs> end part of that? I didn't pick that up. The end part? Um, uh, for council the barge would be able to so so are you talking about what the signs the, yeah. they put up some signs in the city clerk's office um, I want to say earlier this week that 
during the interim period while they're while you know they're without an in or, uh, they're without a city clerk they won't be providing same day service for some of the services that they normally provide and some it, you know and and that was the case too while they were busy working you know on elections and that sort of thing i, I you know i'm assuming that it's a short term thing i haven't talked with them about it but um, that was one of the things that we strived for when um, when I joined Wendy's office, quite frankly, you know, when I went into the office, you filled out your request and you had to come back the next day. And to me, that was something that um, I couldn't see people coming back a second time. It was an interruption in my day and it was an interruption in their day to have to do that. So I, you know, Wendy and I talked and, and she said if I was willing to do same day service, you know, we could, we could try it. And we continued on with that except during periods of election. And I know, um, you know, I know it's, it's doable. The systems are a little, you know, cumbersome sometimes, but, but it is a doable um, type of thing. And, you know, the other thing, too, is that they, they have one brand new staff person there who's never utilized any of the systems in there. So that person is, you know, is still learning the registrar voter side of, of the city clerk's office and has not yet been, you know, even indoctrinated into some of the city clerk stuff. So it's really just Amy doing the job by herself. She got her hands full. Yeah, she does. She does. Okay. Yep. The 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 position you're applying for, the, there are big shoes to fill, as you've acknowledged. Absolutely. And uh, the the critical aspect of the city clerk's office has be never become more evident as it has now uh, w with this vacancy as it looms. So, uh, I agree. I, I I'm grateful for your submission and your in you. consideration of the position. Um, I don't think there are any other questions or comments. So this is odd, but if you want to take your place back here. <laughs> <laughs> I will acknowledge the awkwardness of this whole thing, just so you can recognize the, that creature sitting in the middle of the room. Um, Call for nominations. A motion to open nominations, or so. I just did that. Just did, that's open and second. Okay. All those in favor of opening nominations, please say aye. 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 <coughs> I will uh, uh, nominate Pamela Powers. I second that for the position of interim city clerk. Mm -hmm. Any other nominations? I'll accept a motion to close nominations. Motion to so close nominations. All those in favor of closing nominations, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So we have one candidate who's nominated. Uh, now I will ask the administrative assistant <laughs> <laughs> call the roll on the on the election. Uh, please state the name of the person you would prefer to fill this position, as your name is called. Who's? Oh, Pamela Powers. Pamela Powers. Councilor Murphy. Pamela Powers. Councilor Nash. Pamela Powers. Councilor O'Donnell. Pamela Powers. Councilor Pamela Powers. Councilor Powers. Pamela Powers. Councilor Pamela Powers. Pamela Powers. All right, if I do the counting right, let's see, it seems that it's unanimous. Pamela's, Pamela Powers is the is elected to serve as the interim city councilor uh, clerk I'm sorry thank you <laughs> yeah. you actually and my position's up I'm it's, um, we will the swearing in the oath will be done at the end of the meeting and for for reasons that should probably be obvious because and I should say for the public's understanding Pam cannot serve in a in a in a hired position for the city of Northampton as an elected official so as an elected official if she were to be sworn in right now then we'd just be sitting here staring straight ahead not knowing exactly her. so we're just going to have pam take us through it okay yeah we could queue up other members of her family to come take her position 
So, so the oath will come at the end. So now um, we'll go into recess for the Finance Committee, and that's presided over uh, by Councilor Murphy. And it's yours. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, Pam, would you call the roll of finance, please? I'm here. Present. Present. Here. We're all here. So, uh, first item is to approve the minutes of June 15th, 2017. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Any changes or additions or improvements? No? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Um, now, financial orders. The mayor's queuing up here. Um, the first one is 17. Three four six in order to approve a deed uh, from the city to Rebecca Duggan and John Duggan Jr. Uh, order that. Whereas Rebecca Duggan and John Duggan Jr. hold record title to a certain premises located on 139 Florence Street in Leeds, Mass., subject to a life estate held by Mrs. Duggan's mother, Kathleen Elliott. And whereas the Dugan Elliott property is in contiguous to land owned by the city of Northampton, which was acquired by the city in 1972 by a deed um, of the Hampshire County Association for Retarded Children, Inc. And whereas the city property is currently the locus of the Leeds Memorial Park, and whereas a dispute has arisen to the title to a certain triangle of land known as land claimed by Kathleen M. Elliott Revocable Trust. Um, it's a 1,775.4 square foot parcel on a plan entitled Plan of Land in Northampton, surveyed for Kathleen M. Elliott Revocable Trust, dated May 15, 2015. And whereas it is apparent that Ms. Ms. Elliott has used and occupied the disputed land openly, notoriously, and adversely to the interests of the city for a period of more than 20 years, and whereas the city has not found any document to establish the dedication of the city land as a park, which would subject it to the provisions of Article 97 of the Articles of Amendment to the Massachusetts Constitution. Now, therefore, it be ordered that in lieu of an auction in court to quiet the title to the disputed land, the mayor is authorized to convey the disputed land to Rebecca J. Duggan and John uh, P. Duggan, Jr. by quick claim deed uh, containing a provision by which the land shall revert to the city should it be determined that the land conveyed hereunder is in fact subject to the provisions of Article 97. Councillor, I'm going to reaccuse myself on that. Okay, very good. And the mayor is here. Yes. Talk about it. Um, so uh, this is a uh, Kathy Elliott's home is next to Leeds Memorial Park, which some of you may know is across the street from uh, Leeds Elementary School. Um, it was a veterans memorial park that's been built up over time and expanded over time. Um, and uh, and so as it as it states in the um, in the uh, resolution, uh, there was some confusion. Uh, as to the ownership of a certain triangle of land, the land that's being talked about, um, which has been um, uh, seemingly part of the park, but there's, it's, it's unclear whether it legally is part of the park or whether it's part of Miss Elliott's uh, property, which she now wants to um, convey uh, to this, tr to this uh, sale to um, Duggins. And so her attorneys contacted us um, I know uh, Councillor Klein uh, also, you know, reached out to us to make sure that we could try to figure out a resolution for uh, Ms. Elliott. Um, uh, City Solicitor Seawald worked with uh, their attorney. Uh, we did significant research. The one, the only area of concern we had um, was the whether or not the land had ever been put into Article 97, because if it had been, then in order for us to do this, it would take an act of the legislature to take it out of Article 97. We show no record of it being ever being put into Article 97. Um, I guess I can now say, I guess I can say former city clerk Wendy Mazza uh, did extensive research. She could find no records of any action. Um, so this was worked out as the clearest solution, um, which is for us to just convey title to clear up that title so that they can make the conveyance. Um, and then you can see there is sort of a, uh, a protection in there, uh, which we think is really unlikely, but their attorney was fine with having it in there, which is just the stipulation that, you know, if evidence could be found, 
um, then that that would uh, that obviously because we don't have the authority to convey Article 97 land. Um, they were fine with that. It allows them to move forward with their real estate transaction. Um, and again, we want to uh, be good neighbors uh, to to them and and make sure that they can move their transaction forward. Mm -hmm. Any questions for the mayor and finance, uh, councilor? Um, so we don't know historically how this misunderstanding developed then it was just um, we don't no we don't uh, I think it was with good intentions and um, you know the park was developed over time um, I know former counselor uh, Ray Labarge uh, was involved in the park uh, formation um, and for whatever reason there, there was this this area of the park uh, where this um, encroachment occurred and uh, Again, it only was discovered when uh, they were doing the legal paperwork for this transaction, and it was determined that this uh, this sliver triangle of land there was some question as to the title, um, and that and it and I know perhaps uh, oh, Councillor Klein can also add to that because I know she's spoken to the constituents about it. Well, I was just going to comment that um, since the the park was um, established the land has been cared for by mrs elliott exactly. so that you know she's been clearing it from snow and uh gardening along the stretch this little triangle so it's absolutely been i mean we have to grandfather it i think because she really has cared for it for the 20 years that the park has been there mm -hmm. yeah. and that's why we're we're basically happy to convey that and it doesn't impact the park in any way it doesn't it's not going to impact the park in any way that's a, it's just the the reason I asked the question is I mean we've we've run up against these kind of anomalies in the mm -hmm. past uh, because historically there was some corners uh, sharp edges rounded off uh, literally and figuratively shortcuts were taken and some things and and everything seemed fine until it comes to the point of trying to determine ownership or access to property or understanding of deed restrictions and the like and it's just that with this comes up pretty frequently not really frequently but that we we have seen some historical artifacts like this that have created created problems created problems for the property owners the butters for the city and so in this respect this is clearing the table of the points of conflict and stress and also allows this property to move forward uh, as as whole and uh, with integrity in the deed I would assume so yep and also note that there are actually there's there's a, a border that was planted there are full growth trees um, and big rocks that kind of um, create a boundary line between the park and the Elliott property or the Duggan property that seem to imply in fact that, that it has always been um, part of mrs elliott's property it's the there's the understanding there's a term i think called adverse use possession uh, yeah the, mm -hmm. that that when people presume a right away or presume property ownership and continue and no one challenges it and for a certain period of time it becomes it becomes susceptible to allow it to be considered but that's not the case here this is us granting um uh, a, a clear definition of their their mm -hmm. current property ownership and, and their boundaries yep. yeah. so. any other questions in finance hearing none oh you you didn't get a motion no we need a motion yeah. uh, I'll move that uh, a positive recommendation vote. yes please second all right no if there's no more discussion all in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. um the council of barge to resume the position here and then we'll take home. The next is 17347, order to authorize purchase of property at Leonard Street and Haydenville Road. Leads order that whereas some projects provide traffic mitigation under city zoning, including some projects in Leeds, and whereas the Leeds community meeting participants identified the need for safety improvements at Leonard Street. Haydenville Road intersection in part 
uh, in order to slow the speed of traffic southbound on Leonard Street, and whereas the owner of the property at the southerly side of the said intersection has agreed to sell a triangle of land for $1,000 to allow the city to eventually make safety improvements to that intersection, and whereas the purchase price will come from traffic mitigation funds, order that the city acting through the mayor is authorized to purchase the above described property for roadway and streetscape improvements. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second. Second. And probably the mayor the, can explain this. Probably the most illustrative thing is to look at the um, to look at the attached plan if it's if it's attached to the order. I think it is. Yep. Um, you yeah. can see, um, you know, Leonard Street, which comes in at a pretty sharp angle uh, to Route Nine, and it creates kind of a dangerous turning radius as well as you know sight lines are bad. Sight lines are bad, and then people who you know sort of cut the corner, um, and so that triangle that you see. Um, is the land in question that the owner is um, allowing us to purchase for $1,000. And the goal, something that the Office of Planning and Sustainability is working on, is to make improvements to the intersection. Um, and, you know, the land was not critical to the, to the landowner, and so they were willing to sell it, and um, so that's the plan. Question, yes. Um, presuming that in that land there would be a uh, built an intersection that will allow easy right and left-hand turns that would make redundant the end of, Len of Leonard Street as it enters now where does that who's that land go to should that if that's I don't know that it's I'm not sure that it would be redundant um, maybe I'll have Wayne answer come up and answer that I'm not sure that it would be uh, we may make some curb bump outs or we may re-angle the intersection a certain way. I don't know if there's been a plan or a design yet, but. Yeah, Wayne, has there been? A so the plan is still underway. We've hired Ty and Bond. They've just completed the surveying and are doing preliminary work. I mean, it, if the intersection changed to the south and if city council discontinued that portion of the road, then the land will go back to the neighbors. But DPW often wants to keep those because there may, may not be utilities underground and they want it for future options. So my guess is we keep it, but okay? we'd have that discussion with the design. Yeah, there's a water line running through it. Yeah, then we would. Yeah. They would do, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Any questions on this one for the mayor? No, hearing none. Oh, Council. Oh, just briefly, um, <coughs> is Ty and Bond working on a broader project than just this intersection? I mean, they're doing a different project for us on oh. King Street. I just asked the only. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. This is the only thing in the area that they're doing. Okay. But is it part of that King Street project? No. Okay. We hired them, We've hired them even though we haven't taken the land yet. That's correct. Okay. Because we would, we wouldn't. These two go together, so we're uh -huh. we're asking for approval now because our option runs out the end of this year. Uh -huh. We wouldn't actually move forward if we had a better sense of exactly where the boundaries are uh -huh. that we need. So we need to understand from them exactly what actually works and doesn't work. Execute the transaction. It, this thousand square feet is what worked for the property owners, so it wasn't a problem. Okay. Whether we need the whole thousand square feet, we're not quite sure until the yeah. design moves. Okay. In. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Then all in favor of a positive recommendation from finance, please say aye. 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 And then if you will indulge me, I'd like to go out of order and take 17359 next. That's the acquisition of the storm drain easement. Mr. Willard is here for that purpose, and this would allow him not to have to sit through the rest of the finance agenda, and we get right to his business. Um, so as I said, it's 17359. <coughs> Uh, this is upon the recommendation of the mayor, whereas the city receives mass work, received a mass work grant for upgrades to Lower Pleasant Street, and whereas among the projects to be completed through the mass works grant is the realignment of a storm drain that traverses the former Northampton Lumber property, currently owned by Valley Community Development Corporation, and the site of a proposed mixed use affordable housing redevelopment project. And whereas the storm drain also runs within the westerly side of the property located at 19 Holyoke Street, known as Harold's Garage, owned by Holyoke Street LLC, being parcel 176 on Assessor's Map 32C. Uh, and whereas the city holds a historic easement for the storm drain line on the Holyoke Street property 10 feet wide, and whereas the city is in need of an easement 30 feet wide on Holyoke Street, 
uh, on the Hoyt Street property to accommodate the construction and maintenance of the proposed real line pipe and provide additional area based on current standards for any future repair or replacement of the pipe further downstream that is not proposed to be repaired or replaced at this time and whereas no appropriation needed to fund this acquisition because adequate appropriated funds are available in the Stormwater Water uh, Utility Enterprise Fund. Uh, now, therefore, it be ordered that the City Council hereby authorizes the acquisition by purchase, gift, or eminent domain of a storm drain easement on the westerly side of land on Hoyoke Street that uh, belongs to Hoyoke Street LLC at 19 Hoyoke Street, Northampton, parcel 176 on Assessor's Map 32C, which easement shall be 30 feet in width on such terms and conditions as the Mayor shall deem advisable. Do we have a motion? Make uh, a motion. Second. Very good. So we'll have the mayor explain, and then uh, Mr. Willard. Yes, and I also have the oh. DPW director here as well for okay. technical uh, assistance or any questions that you have. So um, this project emanates from the uh, redevelopment of the Northampton Lumber property. Uh, the Valley CDC, as we know, has purchased that and is going to create a new housing development. The council approved um, CPA funding, and uh, the mayor's office um, also invested uh, uh, CDBG funds into that project. Um, as part of that redevelopment, um, the city also applied for a uh, mass works grant because one of the infrastructure needs of the project is to move an existing uh, storm drain line that currently runs underneath the property where the new building would be constructed. So we received a mass works grant that's going to pay for the relocation of that uh, of that drain line. Um, and so if, if you look on the map, uh, starting at the top, you can see a green line that's the existing uh, drain line that currently you know, bisects the Northampton Lumberyard property and that it meets up with, crosses Holyoke Street, and that it meets up with um, uh, the property um, in question that where we're requesting the easement. We already own a 10-foot wide easement there. Uh, that is a historic easement and um, and it's tying it, so that's and then you know it continues on that that uh, hash marked area the yellow line starting at the top is the proposed drain line that would then you know run in a different direction to avoid where the construction site is happening it would run it would cross our street Holyoke Street and then it would meet up with um, the current uh, storm uh, sewer and tie into it there um, we are uh, receiving a 30-foot easement from uh, Valley CDC on there on, for the you know, section in yellow, um, and we have requested, um, or begun discussions to uh, purchase a 30-foot easement uh, where the new uh, drain line is located, which is a more uh, common uh, easement width for uh, a line of this uh, a line of this size to be able to do if work ever needed to be done on it to be able to have access to the line a 10 foot you can imagine 10 foot's pretty narrow um, most trucks are wider than 10 feet um, and so it does not give us a lot of area to work so um, what this uh, what this order does um, is basically authorizes me uh, to be able, on behalf of the city, to either acquire by purchase, uh, by gift, or by eminent domain uh, that particular easement, which is sort of the pink area. Um, and, uh, and so that's what the order is before you. Uh, this is the first reading. Um, the DPW has been in conversations with Mr. Willard, um, and, uh, and we hope to, to continue those conversations over the next uh, couple of weeks. And so this is a request for that first reading. We are, have the MassWorks grant um, has been awarded and our goal is to get this project completed um, so that it has to be done within the fiscal year, but we also have uh, a schedule that um, Valley CDC is working on that they want to be able to break ground and begin their project in October. So we're trying to time the work um, to their schedule. So. That's the, that's the essence of what we're requesting, and, um, and I can provide additional information if uh, you have questions now or if you want to talk to uh, Director LaScalia. Mm -hmm. Council Labarge. Yeah. Mayor, Mr. Willard, mm -hmm. what property does he own? He owns the property that the pink line goes through, so that's his property. So that would be 
you know, the, the larger building would be Harold's okay. Garage that you see when you drive down Holyoke mm -hmm. Street. And then there's additional buildings um, uh, as well as home uh, that's over here. But yeah, the pink area is the, is the, um, is, is the entirety of the 30-foot wide easement uh, that would basically expand a 10-foot easement to 30 feet wide. And it will actually affect his property, correct? Well, it will affect it in the sense that there will be, we will have an easement to be able to access it if we ever have mm -hmm. to do any work on the pipe. Obviously, we hope we never have to go touch the pipe, right. um, but it's something we have to acquire, mm -hmm. um, you know, similar to, mm -hmm. you know, National Grid was here earlier and they want to install a line under Masonic Street parking lot, and so they need an easement from the mm -hmm. city. Um, to be able to have that so that they have access to it. doesn't mean they own it. Um, it just means we have the right to, um, to, to go, you know, we have easements all around the city. Right, um, so we're going from 10 feet to 30 feet. That's basically what we're attempting to do. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, again, we, again, we will, our, and, and this again gives me the authority to purchase uh, or acquire by gift or acquire okay. sort of all the options mm -hmm. uh, that, that would be available to us. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Any, other um, any other questions for the mayor? And this is, I think, probably the appropriate time to see if Mr. Willard has a comment that he wants to make. Sure. Are we good with the mayor to this point? Then, Mr. Willard, if you want to come up and make a comment, please feel free to do so. Yes, come on up and. Uh, this project, as we know, has been in the works now, as far as I know, for at least a couple of years. And I was approached by the city people in regards to tying the pipe in where the uh, brick pipe ends, which was in on my property somewhat. At that time, they at first were going to shut me right down, period. I said I wouldn't stand for it. Then I agreed that with the easement, as far as I was concerned, there was no quorums whatsoever to put the new pipe in and tie it in with the existing pipe, uh, which is five feet in diameter. Now, there was only a couple meetings held, and if I may, in this respect, we are responding to, you might say, the job that's proposed. It is. My comment to say right now, because of the short notice that I received by way of certified mail within an hour after the meeting was held with Donna and David at my home, because my wife has dementia pretty bad and I won't leave her unattended. Now, never before was increasing the easement the way they want it presently. There is a, an existing, what you might call, pole place where we park a crane. And I told him it was necessary, that would disappear fast. Now, we've been in business down there for 72 years. And I started in July of 1945, and then in 1960 we purchased the property, which is in question. And it's been operated by myself, and I believe we are the oldest business in the city today operated by its founder. The main issue not in writing is the disconnecting of our sewer pipe, which was permitted to tie into the existing pipe, which is reported to be replaced. And through this conversation, the I had a few options given to me. Why not use a porta potty? Now, can you see a business been there for 72 years being asked in the center of town to use a porta power? I was livid when they told me. There is an existing line on the other side of the Hoyoke Street underpass that services all the homes from the underpass the opposite way. I said, tie me in there. They have never actually offered me any kind of a tie-in with a sewer pipe. And the issue bothers me, as was stated in the past, that the work that's underway now is strictly to 
benefit the developers who's going to redo uh, and re rebuild the homes or whatever on the lumberyard. In the meantime, they're going to cut my throat. Now, it, it is my request at present time that I'm going to ask to table this matter until I have full legal counsel. I don't care how long it takes, but it holds up the property otherwise, but they're doing me dirty. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, it's, it's a shame that they didn't bring up this, wanting to give me $71,000 or $1,000, or whatever it is in the letter. I told them money was not an object. I don't need money. And I point blank told them I wasn't interested. Because if I was to take the money, they're going to have that much more control over my property, which they're going to make useless as a sale. So anyway, as I repeat again, the fact my wife and I built ran that business for that many years. Three years, three years ago, I was forced to retire because of her dementia. She will never go to a nursing home, my friend, as long as I'm alive. And therefore, I was forced to retire. And in the problem of doing so, we transferred the ownership of Harold's Garage Inc. to the two boys. Now, being 94, my wife 91, we decided it was time to make arrangements for our departure. And already in June, before even having a sprung on me, it's in the hands of the legal people to draft up the, the proper paperwork to transfer the Pleasant Street property to my oldest boy, Daniel, and the Hoyle Street property to my youngest son, Michael. These both boys have worked there also all their lives. And it, and it don't seem right that they feel that they need 30 feet when they got 10 feet already and the pipe has been in there as long as I can ever remember. And so I have no choice but to pursue any kind of legal action I do to get some kind of a bargain driven. I told them I would cooperate all the way to tie into the existing cement pipe and get rid of the brick pipe. If you look at the, uh, the paper here that's in front of everybody, it shows the sewer line crossing, and it goes right up to the property. Now, if we could research history, history will show that where that line went is Rare, was Railroad Avenue. And it, w it went from this point all the way up to the railroad station. And these other people, including Charlie Paquette, decided they were just going to extend their properties. And now, as, a, as you saw, as a scene, they want to take that pipe and put it way around. Now, wh why can't they do that for my property? Now, my property is going to be worth nothing. How am I going to sell it to anybody without a sewer line? That's the issue. Give me a sewer line. I don't want their money. Um, certainly. Uh, so, uh, I, just for clarification, you have a sanitary sewer that's going into a storm drain now? Is that what's happening? Well, it, it's, it enters into the pipe. I can't, I can't think of the gentleman's name who was superintendent of the sewer department at that time. And they told me, look, there's no sewer line coming from Pleasant Street in. But there was a sewer line coming from the other way. So they suggested I tie into that pipe. So now, uh, now uh, they become Indian givers. Oh, you can't have that no more. We want it back. Well, the, the, thing, the distinction I'm trying to make is the green line that currently is running is stormwater, as I understand. And you have a sewer that's going on. So you're having raw sewage going into a storm drain that... I don't know about raw sewage, but, I, but I've got to say this. Uh, why, at the time, of course, I realized time changes, and I can't recall the gentleman's name that was in charge of the sewer department at the time. And I had just bought the property 
from the Clark Coconley people and build a new facility. Well, that was great. I was going to be another bigger taxpayer and so forth. And the fact they didn't want to put a line in was the fact they gave me permission to tie in. Now, in the corner of my building, as you're looking down Hoyle Street, that is the spot where, this, where the sanitary facilities are located, which is only a, a, a toilet, a, a sink to wash up in, and a urinal. And that is probably not any further than the length of this room from where my line went out and turned out back toward Pleasant Street. And they have a deaf ear. They don't want to listen to that. But they want to give me a puny 71 grand. You hire somebody to design you a system. And they think I'm going to make money on it. I don't need money. I need a sewer so we can keep operating. And, the, and for, to ask me to put a sanitary can out there, that's insulting. So, so, so if I understand the two points of conflict for you, the more critical one being the, the sewer line, because that actually probably affects your property's value, because well, essentially it's, it's right because it's a it's a it's a non-legal connection to a, a storm drain. Sure. But then, and then and and then. The other issue is, of course, the width of the, the easement that's being requested from going from 10 feet to 30 feet, which your concerns about uh, warehousing your trucks, your, your uh, cranes and stuff. And the, the, the whole yard is available if they want to make a hole there tomorrow. If they want to make a hole tomorrow. And I told them I'd have full cooperation, getting that joined in and so forth and whatnot. And then they turn around and spring this, they want to put a 30 foot easement on there. And the what is 71 grand? I don't know what they pay for the lumberyard. Now, I own the property on Pleasant Street as well. If I were to incorporate the Pleasant Street property with the Hoyle Street, it's far more valuable than they ever pay for the lumberyard. And the city ain't going to have to do anything for me. And my, my question is, your concern about the easement would impact your property's value? Uh, that's one of the big issues, yes. Do, in, how do you feel that it would impede your ability to conduct business and also your property's resale value? The, uh, I have a little hard uh, hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. No, how, how, what are your concerns? How would that wider easement impact your ability or your son's ability to do business? And also, how would it impact your ability for resale? <clears throat> I would say the resale would have a big, a big to do with it. If I were to change my plans now, and I probably wouldn't have time to live to do this. I am 94. Now, I could incorporate my Pleasant Street property with that property, because they are joining, and put it up for sale as a package. And I'm sure it would bring a, a, a very good price. I would even try to talk my boys into retiring and get out of the business, period because they're of their age and my own age. I am now not an engineer in the garage. I'm a household engineer. Take care of my wife. So, <laughs> but it's my concern that I am not gonna try to give something to my boys that is useless. Council LaBarge, you had a question. No. No, you don't? All right. Um, All I asked him is to put me in a sewer line. Now, as an illustration, they, they tell me this, they tell me that. I have a motorhome, and in the motorhome it's called a bath and a half. The farthest part of the motorhome to the rear has toilet facilities, shower, washing dryers, and all that. And in that room, there was a toilet that, whatever the term is, they use it on boats that will demolish the sewerage and it put it into the holding tank further up in the motor room. And then, of course, that's indeed proper facilities. And I say, why can't you do something like that? They don't want to, mm -hmm. don't want to hear um, me. They think I should take the 71 grand and hire somebody to design the facility. Mm -hmm. Councilor like, uh, has a question for you, I assume. Well, I wanted to ask if the DPW could maybe provide some additional information to some of the points 
uh, Mr. Willard has oh, raised. Mr. Willard was done. I was going to ask Ms. Liscalia to come up and answer some of our questions. Oh, great. Yeah. So, and, and just to remind everybody here, we are not doing a taking. All we're doing is the City Council hereby authorizes um, the acquisition by purchase, gift, or eminent domain, but this isn't a taking. This is to authorize the mayor to negotiate with Mr. Willard. So, you know, our action tonight is, is not going to take any property from you. It's going to authorize the mayor to further negotiate with you. Well, I am only asking tonight, give me time to get some legal work done. Mm -hmm. Well, that could be part of the negotiations with the mayor. Well, whatever it's going to be, because I told him I would spend whatever it took. Mm -hmm. I'll spend whatever it yeah. takes that our Harrow's garage will exist with a sewer. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. So that's my proposal. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, now, uh, I'd like to just yeah. respond. Fine. To Thank you, Mr. Willard. Well. Yeah, you're yeah. welcome to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Um, again, I will have Ms. Lascalia talk to you about this in more detail. Um, again, uh, I have great respect for Mr. Willard and his business, and it's certainly not our intent to uh, obstruct his business in any way. In fact, the the uh, the RFP that we put out for the construction um, you know, stipulates that the business has to be allowed to continue and to operate while the construction is going on. Um, uh, the, uh, the issue of the $71,000, we had an appraisal done, a market rate appraisal done by a third party firm for the value of a 30 foot easement, um, which is what we do anytime we acquire an easement when we're you know, acquiring it, you know, anytime we're acquiring property, we're acquiring an easement. So we had a market rate um, assessment done of that. And so um, uh, an, a, an initial letter was extended to, to discuss purchasing an easement um, and that, that, that the um, value of that easement was $71,000. So that's what the, what, the $71,000 is. Um, and I can let uh, Ms. Lascalia describe the other um, mm -hmm. uh, situations that were discovered as part of this mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. and the timing. Great. Good evening. Thank you. So just, just to confirm, the line that's being moved is a storm sewer, not a sanitary sewer. That is correct. It is a storm sewer. But it appears Mr. Willard's sanitary sewer is going into the storm sewer. So when we first started looking at this project and the proposed relocation, we had to do some investigation to determine what needed to be done to move the line. And upon investigation, we found what we consider to be an illegal hookup to the storm drain. So sewage is being discharged into the storm drain system. Now there are many times where we find these around the city. It's part of our work um, to be in compliance with the various regulatory uh, agencies who we are accountable to. Um, a connection from a building's wastewater to a storm drain system that flows to a river which this storm drain does, is a violation of multiple uh, uh, statutes. Today. Um, yes. So Maybe not when it happened, but. The it, that's, <laughs> that's correct. So probably the easiest thing to do is go to Chapter 278 of the City of Northampton Code of Ordinances. So in, in Section 278-5B, and I'll just read it because I think that's the easiest thing to do. Illicit connections. No person shall construct, use, allow, maintain, or continue any illicit connection to the municipal storm drain system, regardless of whether the connection was permissible under applicable law, regulation, or custom at the time of connection. An illicit connection is defined as a conveyance which allows a non-stormwater non discharge for example, sewage, to the municipal storm drain system. <coughs> so typically, upon discovery of a connection like this, we work with the resident to rectify the situation. And the resident rectifies the situation at their expense. So regardless of the circumstances, we are under constraints based on statutes, uh, 
that I can continue to describe here, Mass General Law, Chapter 111, Section 122, regulations relative to nuisances. Um, the health department can levy fines. Um, DEP also takes an interest in these sorts of connections, um, as well as the Clean Water Act mm -hmm. through the EPA. Um, we have MS4 permit um, to discharge clean stormwater only to rivers and other water bodies. So these are all the things that that the city has to work under. Mm -hmm. So in situations like this, we work with the resident to address the connection and make it legal. Um, in this particular case, um, we have done some work to determine the feasibility of tying in Mr. Willard's building to our existing sewer. And we, the, the building is, is sort of midpoint between two <laughs> Uh, possible sore connections, as you can see. That would probably be why way back when they just plugged it in where they did. Because I don't doubt for a second it's, that it's, it, it was okay when it was done. It's, it's possible. Of course, this was pre-Clean Water Act, but yeah. certainly yeah. rules have changed. So in looking at the, our engineering staff went out and actually did a very thorough investigation on behalf of Mr. Willard to, to kind of figure out what our best options were here. Um, we shot the grades and gravity is not on our side in either direction. So a force main would be necessary, which is basically just like a pump um, to, to actually pump the sewage to our system, no matter which direction you go. Um, so w with that being said, um, based on the sort of unconventional nature of what would be needed to accomplish this hookup, um, well, let me back up. Um, this was sort of one piece of the puzzle. The second piece of the puzzle was the connection of the new proposed drain line that needs to happen. We have a 10-foot wide easement. Um, the 10 foot wide easement is not sufficient for reasonable standards to work on infrastructure of this magnitude. A 30 foot easement is required. So when the uh, lumber yard um, w was going through the proposed redevelopment and, and the plan was filed uh, and recorded, um, we secured an easement for the drain pipe um, that it is actually, and I know the mayor spoke of this um, earlier, is 32 feet at its narrowest point, but it's actually around 50 feet at its widest point because it's, it's important, you know, this is the city's resource, we need to safeguard access to it. Um, so the other piece of the puzzle here is that we require access to Mr. Willard's property to actually make this connection, and it is appropriate at this time to request a, a full 30 foot easement to give the city flexibility in the future if you know who knows what could happen and, and you know we may need to access but the there's process. no there's it doesn't look like there's any structures on the easement area so it's basically a big driveway um, it is a big driveway there is uh, some encroachment uh, towards the, uh, the the last building that you see where the parcel line is drawn there drawn there is some encroachment there um, but as what mr. Willard uh, mentioned he, he would be amenable to uh, to moving that encroachment and I'm assuming that the 30-foot easement it, it isn't in here but it it probably goes across the CDC property as well for the pipe on their property. Yes, that's yeah. correct. And and so that's what I was referring to as it's 32 feet wide at its narrowest point, but it's 50 feet wide or you know roughly 50 feet wide at its widest point. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is, you know, we're talking about a 6 foot structure that's going into the ground. So when you think about what sort of you know, you do a little bit of math, 10 feet isn't really going to get you much unless you're using a shovel, which isn't an appropriate tool. Was an estimate done as to what it would cost to connect Mr. Willard in the most reasonable direction? Um, I, I do not have an official estimate. Um, I, I can only speculate. Um, there, there has been no design work done to date other than a very thorough investigation by our engineering staff of, of what the grades in either direction would support. And it's our determination that it would require a pump system. Questions, Councilor? A, a couple. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, first of all, Mr. Willard's uh, business, unlike a restaurant, does not have mandated required uh, sanitary services, but that's a convenience that that service has served him for so long. But it's not mandated by the city code to have a working bathroom in in his shop. I can't speak to what the okay. health codes are. I'm sorry, I'm not okay. familiar. That's fair. With that's that. um, is my understanding also that what you're suggesting is this 30 foot easement will also facilitate, give you the flexibility to allow Mr. Willard's business to continue to function while there is any work being done on the property? We have made, uh, we have made uh, great accommodation for Mr. Willard with his input. Um, our engineering staff has, has put together uh, language that, that is bound right into the contract um, to ensure access so that the business can can be able to run. We understand it's a 24-7, 365, you know, you have 20 minutes to get where you're going. Right, they're emergency responders. Business, that is correct. Um, this is bound right into the contract. I'll read it to you. Access shall be maintained at all time to and from Harold's Garage at 19 Holyoke Street, which is a place of business that provides towing for tractors, trailers, heavy duty trucks, buses, and cranes with gross vehicle weight of up to 88,000 pounds. Operation of the business is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with 24-hour emergency service. So that's, that's bound right into the contractor, uh, to the contract, and the contractor is aware of these mm -hmm. requirements. So the 30-foot the easement is for, for contractor use during construction, if you will, mm -hmm. um, but it's very clear that access needs to be maintained. But does it constrain the use of his property in any way that he currently enjoys in any way uh, when the easement's not invoked? No. I mean, he's not, he, he's not <coughs> restricted by putting certain weight vehicles over the, over the space or anything like that. No, he's not. He, he, he couldn't build a structure over the top right. of it. No, but he couldn't anyway because it wouldn't be allowed by zone. Well, there's an easement there now anyway. Yeah. It's not as big. So, but yeah, so that was my concern was that this easement does not limit his ability to do business when the easement is not invoked. There is there is nothing that I know of that would limit his ability, though I'm, I'm not familiar enough with his business to uh, Thank you. Councilor Barge, did you have a question? I was just a little concerned hearing Mr. Willard speak in regards to because of going 10 feet to 30 feet, that it would devaluate his property. I, I don't understand that, how that could actually do that to his property. Can you answer that? I, I just was going to say, I, I, was, I, I think he may have been referring to the sewer hookup, but I may be wrong. Um, but, I, but I know he mentioned, um, at one point he mentioned, and he's here, that, that he was fine with the easement. It was the mm -hmm. sewer issue, which is sort of a separate issue to the easement but obviously it's at the heart of it because when we disconnect this storm sewer line his current sewer connection will obviously have to be disconnected mm -hmm. um, so that's the I think that's the, one of the concerns he has and again we've been trying to work with him um, and trying to help him solve that problem um, but our most imminent concern right now is is the easement so that the project can move forward so that we can make the connection that we need to make yeah. um, Councilor Nash, did you have a question? Yeah, uh, so in, in terms of, all right, there's an easement, and that means that um, whoever owns the property can't build anything within that easement. They can use it as like parking area, correct? Yeah. That's correct. Okay. Um, and so that, so what we're, in terms of Mr. Willard's business, this, uh, is, as long as he's not planning to build anything on top of this, um, it's it's not going to affect his business in any way. The, the way it's current, the way it's current is unlikely. To That's correct. But obviously, it does. It puts a restriction on it, which right. is the fact that it, nothing can be built over it. Which is why an appraiser has determined that there is a value to that. That the easement granting that easement does have a value, right. and so that's why we're. What's why the. Um, that's why part of a potential purchase would be to purchase the easement. So if. So if, if they were to sell this property and, so, and a developer came in here, they would be looking at all of the areas outside of the, 
the pink areas as where they could build. That's correct. Okay. It would be recorded. It would be an easement that would be recorded, and it would be they would be on notice that uh, what the restrictions were, just like the ten foot easement is currently on file, and other easements we have all around the city. Uh, with regard to the to the to the to the sewer matter, I just 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 to be just to be clear, are are are, are we saying that if if Mr. Willard wants to continue to have a, a bathroom facility in his, in his garage operation, he has two options: he can either do a porta potty, or at his expense, he can. Um, have engineered and uh, built a, 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 a properly compliant pump sewage system. Are those are those are those his options? I don't think. I think the discussion. I'll let you speak to this. I think the discussion about porta potties was during the interruption of service. If there was an interruption of service, that would be an option. Okay. I don't so, 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 in other, so in other words, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't believe the So, so if that was just a temporary thing, okay. Then, then, then in fact, there's yeah, there the, the porta potty would not be a permanent solution. Okay. Um, there, there could be, you know, a, like a tight tank is a permanent solution. Did so his know? options permanently are either to not have a bathroom facility at all. Or to, at his expense, pay for the, the, the properly engineered uh, pump system. That is correct, and that's consistent with how the city uh, operates, as I described, when we find these illegal connections, which we definitely find them, um, and and folks need to take steps to address them. However, they happened. You know, sometimes it's like a contractor error. You know, a resident hired a contractor, and and they hooked into the wrong pipe or yeah you know there's many reasons why some why an illicit connection like this can happen um, that, but ultimately it's something that needs to be corrected and it's it's corrected at, at the residents expense Councilor alone I mean I, I think that's for me almost the entire point I mean the easement aside easement is the reason we're aware of the illicit connection but whether or not we're pursuing an easement that still has to be remedied because it's not lawful to discharge sewage into a stormwater system. Mm -hmm. And I guess, this is a comment, I guess more of the question, if I had a question, it would be for the realtor among us, I presume it would lower a property value and make it hard to sell if your property had an illicit connection. I don't know if that's a reasonable thing, well, way to characterize this it. But in the end, had an illicit connection for probably 50 years. So yeah, it's a very long time. Yeah, but now it's, years. now it's today. I, you know, Illicit's fine unless you get caught. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's and that's, the and that's, um, that's the entire and now, point. Now, you know, the trouble is, yeah. is his val the value of his property depreciated with the fact that when we do we have to do under the current law, we cut him off and he has no sewer? Yes, that will hurt him. It needs for the property to have its full value it needs to have sewer line access and it, you know it's it's pretty clear from the scenario it was a long way in two different directions to get there and back in the day when it wasn't legal it was really easy to hook them into the storm sewer so that's what happened and now it's illegal so that you know the easement I don't have any trouble with the easement at all that's reasonable but what do we do with a a, a business that's been taking place in Northampton for years that was at the day legally hooked in the storm sewer because it was convenient for the city and now we're saying sorry well, buddy, I, I just want to be clear yeah. Councilor Murphy yeah. we've researched the record yeah. we don't have any record that the city granted this or did this again what happened in 1950 I don't know yeah. um, but I just you know the characterization that the city's been fine with this until now I think is not accurate I think we just didn't discover it until now Clearly, I don't know what happened in 1950. I'm not sure who the, I wasn't alive in 1950, actually. Um, but, uh, but I can understand, you know, we certainly find these connections. I just want to be clear that uh, we're not reversing we're not, on we're something. Not, uh, yeah. We're not admitting we let him hook up in 1950. And just to finish. Sure. Here. Um, well, I mean, I think for today, I mean, as has been noted, this entire order is about authorizing the mayor to negotiate. To negotiate. That's correct. If we say no, there still has to be some remedial action about an illicit connection. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as far as the council is concerned, I mean, my opinion is move forward to allow the negotiation to happen because that's where these issues are going to be ironed out. But they must be sorted out one way mm -hmm. or another. It's not yes. really an option. 
certainly not for the city council. No, as, I told, our, as I told Mr. Willard, I, I welcome the opportunity to have his legal right. counsel speak with our legal counsel so that we can try to yeah. sort this out. No. And, and that, that is very true. All we're doing is authorizing the mayor to negotiate. Exactly. We're not making a decision on the nature of the negotiations the mayor is. Yeah. And to that point, should it ever come to the point where the mayor actually has to assert and I mean, that comes, comes back to us. us. It'll come back to you. Yeah. Um, and, and right. The order would come back to you. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Willard, Mr. Willard, do you have another question? Uh, yes. Uh, aren't we about, have to abide by the law to provide sanitary conditions for the employees? That, that's what, that was the question I was asking, and I don't yeah. know. So well, we, we can find. I I'm, I'm, I'm make this here. First of all, if my wife is in the office, even on this temporary basis, what is it going to look like her to go out to go into the sandy camp? No, I, I hear you, and I think that, that will come with the negotiations with the mayor, and we'll see how that plays mm -hmm. out. I would like to just make a final question. Just give me a goddamn sewer line back. That's all. Give me my sewer line. I don't want your money. Well, we, we don't have that authority, but yes, that's, yeah, you yeah. can work that out. Money, work. money's not an issue. They're, I'll spend that same amount of money for design and this, that, and the other thing. I, I don't need the grief. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Willard. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So. And again, we, we will continue to talk to Mr. Willard and, and try to reach a solution on this. But again, I just want to be clear, the sewer piece is not really what's before you. It's really the easement piece. Um, this is just a side issue that we have to do. So uh, just just a, a question on, on, on the wording of the order. Uh, you, you say if, if there were to be, uh, if we were to get the point of, of considering uh, a taking, it would come back here. But this, the, it authorizes acquisition by eminent domain here, here in. That's correct. And so I would have to bring, I would bring an order, order of taking of to taking. the next meeting that you would have to sign, that you would all have to vote, and you would all have to sign to approve it. Um, so it would not, it doesn't mean, you're not granting eminent domain, it's one of the options that I can that I can bring back to you. And you would still have to approve it. This doesn't permit that yeah. this evening. Just again, as counselors know, in some of these circumstances, um, where, where um, you know, there was a case related to the um, Hinkley Street project recently, and we were trying to acquire an easement um, for the Hinkley Street project for access to the river, and we were unable to reach an owner, and so the, an order like this that just gave the full panoply of op options was a past. Mm -hmm. Our goal, obviously, is to uh, is to not to do this in a in a friendly way because we obviously uh, respect and support uh, Mr. Willard and his family and their their long commitment to Northampton. So we want to make sure that we can do this in a friendly way, and so we hope we can do that and in a way that's helpful to him, so he's not impacted. Any other questions on this one? Hearing none, all in favor of that positive recommendation that we move, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Now we'll go back on schedule. The next one is 17355, in order to appropriate funds from the FY18 general fund cash capital account for capital projects that were in the capital plan. Um, the first one is central services for the fire department, a fuel dispensing system. $18,000. For the building department, four-wheel drive inspection vehicle, $28,000. For information techn technology services, firewall upgrades for the high school and JFK, $37,500. Information technology services, a cybersecurity upgrade, $45,000. Uh, information technology services, a US UPS battery backup for dispatch, $15,000. Information Technology Services, Disaster Recovery, recovery Solution, $27,000. Parks and Rec and the Northampton Public Schools, Playing Field Improvements, $15,000. Fire and Rescue, Hoses and Appliances, $25,000. Northampton Public Schools, an Attendance Officer Vehicle, $35,000. Public Safety Dispatch, a Radio Tower Assessment, $12,000. A DPW storage building repair, $20,000. Northampton Public Schools cafeteria furniture, $25,000. And Northampton Public Schools, a JFK security upgrade to the main lobby, the engineering for that. For $10,000, the total would be 
$312,500, and I think uh, the mayor will tell us this was in the capital plan. This is just funding this stuff. That is correct. This was part of the capital improvement program that you, um, that we reviewed that, that there were detailed narratives for all of these projects. Um, this is the part of the capital improvement program that we call cash capital because we actually appropriate the money as part of the FY18 budget. Um, or at least we propose that it be appropriated. So now that we have entered FY 2018 and the budget year has begun, we now come to you with an order to actually appropriate the money. Um, so these are the projects that we had identified on the, on the CIP. Uh, and again, they're, they're all uh, ones that you've seen as part of the capital improvement program. And I would ask for your approval. Mm -hmm. uh, questions for the mayor? Questions? Yeah, I know. We jumped into it. So do we have a motion for approval on this? So moved. Yeah, approved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. All right. The next is 17357, an order to authorize our annual intermunicipal agreements. This is upon the recommendation of the mayor. Order that whereas Mass General Law uh, Chapter 40, Section 4A allows for joint operations of public activities among governmental units. And whereas Mass General Law Chapter 40, uh, 4A requires that such intergovernmental agreements be approved in a city by the city council and the mayor. And whereas the city of Northampton provides services to and shares services with other municipalities, therefore pursuant to Mass General Law Sec Chapter 40, um, Section 4A, the City Council hereby authorizes the City of Northampton to enter into the following intermunicipal agreements for FY18. All agreements for one year unless specifically noted. Uh, there's a contract with the Town of Williamsburg for building inspection and zoning enforcement services. Um, this is provided to the Town of Williamsburg uh, and, and it is for a lump sum fee. We have a contract with the Town of Williamsburg for electrical inspection services. It's an agreement to provide the Town of Williamsburg with this service um, with permit fees for these permits turned over to the City of Northampton. We have a contract with the Town of Amherst Hadley East Hampton for municipal hearing officer services. The agreement is to provide municipal hearing officer services pursuant to Mass General Law Section Chapter 148A, Section 2C, to hear complaints related to alleged violations of state building codes or state fire codes for a lump sum uh, per that agreement. We have a contract with Amherst Chester, Chesterfield, Cummington, Hadley, Middlefield, Pelham, Williamsburg, Goshen, and Worthington to provide veterans service officers services. The agreement is to provide these services to the various communities and assessments to the individual towns per that agreement. The contract with the town of Granby, Hadley, and Amherst to provide sealer of weights and measure services. Uh, the agreement is to provide these services to the various communities and assessments to those individual towns are per the agreement. Contract with the Franklin County Regional Council of Governments to monitor and support the Greater Franklin County Economic Target Area. We have a contract with the Town of Amherst for kennel services. The Town of Amherst provides kennel space for dogs in the custody of the <coughs> Northampton Animal Control Officer and payment is per that agreement. A Pioneer Valley Bike Share Partnership and related contracting with the cities of Holyoke, Springfield, and the town of Amherst, UMass, and the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for the purposes of establishing and managing and operating a regional bike share system for the Pioneer Valley, which shall automatically renew for subsequent one year periods unless terminated as per the agreement. However, it is not to exceed three years from FY18 to FY21. We have a contract with the Franklin Regional Council of Governments to partner with the City of Northampton to its Health Department relative to the following contracts. One, to provide services relative to the Hampshire Medical Services Corps and two, provide emergency management services for the Hampshire Public Health Emergency Preparedness Coalition. We have a contract with the towns of Williamsburg, Goshen, Southampton, Chesterfield, and West Hampton. The agreement is to provide, um, oh my goodness, laser, laser fish hosting services for an annual fee, laser fish. It doesn't have fins, that laser fish. Um, contract with Bay State Health Inc., the City of Springfield, Department of Health and Human Services, Hamden County District Attorney, Northwestern District Attorney, Hamden County Sheriff's Department, and Partners for a Healthier Community Inc. The agreement is to work 
cooperatively to create methods to collect, store, and aggregate data relating to opioid use and abuse in the region with the goal of analyzing trends and identifying short and long-term uh, intervention strategies. We have a contract with Amherst, South Hadley, Pelham, Ware, Belchertown, and East Hampton. And the agreement is to jointly create a coalition called Hampshire Opiate Abuse Prevention Collaborative, and it's charged with mobilizing local boards of health, medical providers, educational facilities, social service agencies, community organizers, and other in Hampshire County to create sustainable policies, programs, and practices to change community ideas and expectations regarding to opioid use and abuse, as well as to re reduce the morbidity rate and uh, mortality rates that result from opioid use and abuse. We have a contract with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, Amherst, Williamsburg, East Hampton, Blandford, Chester, Worthington, Chesterfield, Cummington, Goshen, Huntington, Middlefield, Plainfield, Russell, and Belchertown through the Mass in Motion program to focus on the built environment the built environment, healthy access to food, and early intervention to reduce obesity related to chronic diseases. We have a contract with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for climate adaptation support uh, through the Municipal Vulnerability Program. We have a contract with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for local planning technical assistance through the local district technical assistance and the local technical assistance programs. We have a contract with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for traffic and transportation analysis through the Federal Department of Transportation Unified Work Program. We have a contract with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for historic preservation planning through the Community Preservation Act program. So do we have a motion, Make a motion. on those? Second? Um, Second. Any question for the mayor on all the things we do with our neighbors? I, think, I, I was going to say, I think the one takeaway you'll get if anyone has any question whether we're collaborating and trying to regionalize services. I think this order mm -hmm. answers that question. We have a lot of great uh, collaborations, not only with neighbors, but regionally um, and with regional agencies. And so this is just the annual requirement that in order to maintain, continue these, we have to approve these intermunicipal agreements, which are contracts between different levels of government. Um, and this is something that uh, we've begun doing uh, uh, we, it was sort of um, one of the things that I think we, uh, we've we been going through every year and checking to make sure that we have all of these, um, including some that are somewhat innocuous. Um, so we've put everything we can find that we that constitutes an intermunicipal agreement on there. So, all right, you, you have a question? Counselor? You have a uh, request for two readings. Are some of these uh, time yeah. sensitive? Is that the, In the main meaning? For the request? Um, I think any of yours time sensitive? There's requests for two readings. Yeah. Constantly. I think the question is that we're we're in the middle of these agreements right now, and we're into the fiscal year. So the idea would be um, the fiscal year has already begun, and it's you know, and so I think we would like to do it to make sure that we're being lawful um, through the process. Um, Could you remind me why these have to be renewed annually, and they can't go longer term than that? You know, it's a good question. Um, some of them are just year-to-year -year agreements that we have. Um, many of them are year-to-year -year agreements. Um, and and um, some there are, I know one of them, the bike share, does specify that it's a three-year period. Um, but some of them are just by the nature of how they're structured, a year-to-year -year agreement. Um, and that's how communities have wanted to do it. And. Um, and you know, in the case of the veterans district, I you know I may look into that. It's not truly a veterans district, but um, we do <coughs> occasionally add communities to the district, um, and sometimes there are changes that happen to the district. So that may be the reason why we want to bring it forward. But um, I am going to look into that because that would help certainly streamline it if the council was amenable to that. Um, but I, it may we may be constrained by law. I can check into it. Plus, there, there, there might be some instances, that not, I mean, there's, these are largely pro forma renewals, but mm -hmm. if there were ever any doubt as to its renewal, a, a one-year planning period isn't a lot of time to True. get things going. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, no, fair point. I can check into it. Um, any other questions for the mayor on the intermunicipal agreements? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 
All right, the next, again, on the recommendation of the mayor, this is 17358, is an order to authorize transfer of funds for future payments of accrued liabilities for, for compensated absences. Order that the amount of $5,736.93 be transferred from the FY17 unearned leave account to the compensated ab absences reserve fund for future payment of accrued liabilities for compensated absences due to any employee or full-time officer of the city upon the termination of the employee's uh, or full-time officer's employment. Do we have a motion on this? So moved. Second. All right. Um, I think it was about three or four years ago we accepted a special act. Um, this was a new thing that wasn't part of the municipal modernization. It predated it, um, which basically allowed uh, cities and towns to set up this fund um, and at the end of a fiscal year when there's an excess balance in the uh, un unused leave account uh, it could be transferred into this reserve fund sort of treating it like a reserve yeah. like a traditional so, reserve fund yeah. so it'll be um, spent for the same purpose just in future fiscal years exactly roll it forward. Uh, and it's not and so once it goes into the reserve fund then it doesn't go away at the end of the year so we're allowed to, to T capture this at the end of the year, put it into that reserve fund. And because it's a reserve fund, you've got to ask us to take it out. That is that is correct. But the, the question, though, and the, the real issue is, you know, as we, um, if, if we build it up to a certain point, then we may actually uh, be able to budget less Stop. in our operating budget for it if we once we get it up to a certain mm -hmm. level. Right now, it's at, I think it's about $174,000. Um, but that's one of the things I've talked about with the finance director is it will allow us to lower how much we appropriate each year. We get a good um, reserve there. We don't have to fund it. Well, here. part of the issue too is that we um, we've made changes through collective bargaining over time um, to re re relative to payouts and um, as time goes by, uh, many of the folks who were predated those agreements. Um, eventually have retired. Um, folks like our friend, the former police chief and others who um, now newer employees, we have a cap on what payouts are that we've negotiated. So over time, those will be smaller and smaller. So that's the other reason that we, that we may be able to move forward with that. So. Questions for the mayor on this? Is there a rule of thumb for what you want to build it up to? A percentage of well, not at this point. Payroll. At this point, we um, I think we're going to try to look at some historical analysis data for how much we're paying out each year mm -hmm. on a on a given year, <laughs> and, and then just try to budget that way. Um, at this point, we've only this is like the third year I think we've done it, um, so we're sort of building up the reserve fund at this point, mm -hmm. and I think the finance director's plan. Um, the finance director is at a weaving conference this weekend, so she sends her regrets. By the way, she's a uh, is really involved in that, and so she's uh, away working at that conference. Um, but anyway, she, um, she, we've been talking about uh, coming up with some similar to how we have fiscal policies relative to you know building up the capital reserve fund before we tap into it, et cetera. We've been working on trying to develop that policy. So, what will you do when you reach quadruple A bond rating and there's no no more room to go up? I think there's no such thing. When as there's no more reserve funds. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's fine. Uh, no, I think triple A is where we want to stop. We don't, don't want to be like the state, however, who uh, uh, just get yeah. downgraded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we want to, yeah. So if there are no other questions on this one, a uh, motion in finance for positive recommendation. So moved. Second. I think we got that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. All right, and then, we're not our last one. This is 17362, and this is our last budgetary transfers for FY17. So, um, I'm going to. We're asking for two readings. Yeah. Right, we're going to do two readings on this one tonight. This is that. What I'm going to do is read off to you um, where they're going to and where they're coming from. So, the health department. Uh, salaries permanent is going to gain $175. Uh, arts and culture salaries permanent is going to gain $1,309. The cemetery um, salaries technical professional for the cemetery division, $1,750 is going to transfer into. Uh, it's going to come from unemployment insurance. This is unemployment compensation. We're transferring $22,745 out of that. 
and reserve for personnel for wage adjustments, we're taking $47,808 from that source. One of the other places that money is going is um, for auditor's training, $2,094. Cemetery repairs and maintenance, $3,450. For snow and ice, uh, vehicular supplies, $10,860. For printing in the city clerk's office, $1,555. Central Services for Street Lights and Signals is getting $72,300. Central Services um, Repair and Maintenance on Buildings is getting $11,200. Uh, municipal Debt Service Principal Long-Term Debt is getting $8,700. And then Interest on Debt, this is Interest on Long-Term Debt, um, $8,700 is being transferred from that to those variable expenses, various expenses. Uh, interest on debt, interest on notes, $2,840 uh, is coming from there to uh, pay for those transfers. Um, medical insurance, technical and professional assistance, $8,000 is coming from there. Interest on debt, interest on long-term debt, $900 is going there. and. Uh, uh, the water treatment plant architecture and engineering, $900 is coming from that account. Stormwater Enterprise Control Fund for overtime, that's getting $6,500. Stormwater Enterprise uh, PS permanent salaries, that's where the $6,500 is being transferred from. Um, well, this is a good one. Stormwater uh, Enterprise indirect transfers into the general fund of a dollar and stormwater enterprise interest, interest on long-term debt, that's where the dollar's coming from. So in total, we're moving $120,794 from various accounts to other various accounts to balance things off. And again, this is last year, 2017. So it's just a matter of shuffling money from one budget item to another to, to balance the books out to close out 17. Uh, do we have a motion? Councilor. Um, we I received guess. an email from Pam Powers today. Did you receive that email? In regards to the Committee on Finance that we need to accept the changes that are made. It's not on the dollar amounts, but it's, uh, if you look at it, it's it line says, six. I did not receive that email, so I don't have that. It's a, there's a couple of um, or that are right. reversed, and my position is we submitted a, a revised version of it, and we should just be allowed to substitute it, but I'll do whatever the council wants to do. Mm -hmm. um, so just noted as a scrivener's error, the um, yeah. two items. Did you have the, because I do not have that information, so you have your email there. The org code for auditors, uh, is tr the two and the five are transposed and the oh. uh, object code for interest on debt, uh, the, the number two should be a number one. Exactly. Doesn't have any impact on the fund, on the fund. On the money. So uh, the, when the finance director discovered it, she submitted a revised order to make those corrections. So my hope would be you could vote on the revised order, but. A move we approve the revised order. Well, and, and actually, if you want, I will just read, read off the three things and you can move to amend and then we'll go. So on line six, department auditors, OM description training, um, it should be 11352, not 11325. Line eight, snow and ice should be 14232, not 14231. Line 13, departmental interest, um, it's, uh, the object should be uh, 591500, not 592500. So I'd actually just uh, move that we uh, accept the revise, uh, that we Thanks. the revised, rather than amending, That's we right. accept the, the, revised. the revised order that you have in your hand. And I'll second that. Okay. Got it? No, because we, we don't have a motion even because when we were, Council Revised was about to move it or you just moved it with the revised and you just seconded it with the revised. So we're good. Any more discussion? Any questions? Uh, what, one other question I have, uh, you have on medical insurance, you read a medical insurance professional, technical, 
that the transfer from was six thousand dollars. You, you said eight, so I just oh, want to make sure that it's six thousand. No, it's six thousand dollars. Okay, yeah, it's six thousand. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? We need to vote. We do. All in favor of positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 And uh, any opposed? Great. Then I would uh, take a motion to adjourn the longest finance committee okay. that I can Second. Vote. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so we'll come out of recess. <clears throat> Let's get back into those financial orders, shall we? Uh, <clears throat> item 17.355 is an order to appropriate funds from the FY18 general fund capital account uh, for capital projects. And the, okay, so you recall the request is for two readings, but I'll accept a motion on move for, approval. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, motion's made and second. Any further discussion on this? Pam. Yes. 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 Suspend rules. Motions are made to suspend second. rules to allow for a second reading and second. Uh, okay, that's been done. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'll accept a motion for the so second moved. reading. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on this item and second reading? Roll call, please, Ben. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Donald. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. All right, that passes in both readings. Next item is seventeen point three five seven. It's an order to authorize annual intermunicipal agreements. Also, again, a request for two readings. Move to approve. Second. Discussion on these. Bam. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Donald. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Yes. Suspend rules. Motion is made to suspend rules in the second. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Move approval and second. Second. Motion is made and seconded for second reading. Any discussion in second reading? Um, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Murphy. Yes. Murphy. Okay. That passes into reading. Item 17.358. This is an order to authorize transfer of funds for future payment of accrued liabilities for compensated absences. Again, a request for two. Second. Okay. Did I leap over something? Uh, I want to make sure I do yeah. this right. Nope, got it. Okay. Motions made and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Suspend rule 14. Motions yes. made and seconded to allow for a second reading. And, uh, any discussion? All those in favor, please indicate by saying yes. 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 Aye. Any yes. opposed? Any abstaining? Okay. Move second Step reading. Motion second. for second reading has been made and seconded. Any discussion on the second reading? Oh, Pam. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Okay. That passes in two readings. Uh, item 17.362, this is in order to approve the end of year budgetary transfers. Again, request Make for two. Second. In second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Suspend rule. Okay, that's pass them first reading. Motion's made to suspend rules. Second. Second. Discussion on the suspension of rules. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll accept a motion. Move approval. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any, any further discussion on the second reading? Roll call, please, Pam. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Clark? Yes. Councilor Clark? Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? 
Yes. 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 Okay, that item is approved in two readings. Next up, we have orders. Item 17.35, this is an order to authorize the acquisition by purchase, gift, or eminent domain of storm drain easement. This is first Mr. reading. Second. Second. Any further discussion on this? Okay, roll call, please. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor LeBeau? Yes. 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 That passes in first reading, and <coughs> we'll see what comes of that by the second reading in our meeting in August. Item 17.346 is in order to approve a deed from uh, the city to Rebecca J. Duggan and John P. Duggan Jr. First reading. Move approval. Second. Uh, Councilor. I presume you're recusing yourself yes. at this. Okay. Motions are made and seconded. Any discussion on this? It should be noted that Council LaBarge is recusing from the vote. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Miller? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sherry? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. That passes in first reading. Uh, item 17.347, this is an order, an order to authorize purchases of land at the intersection of Leonard Street and Haydenville Road. This first reading, accept a motion. Move approval. Second. Second. And second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor LaBarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Passes in <coughs> first reading. Item 17.344 is in order to authorize the mayor to sign a five year vendor contract with Valley Bike. This is second reading. Moved to approve. Motions made and seconded. Discussion? Oh, Pam. Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. 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 That passes in second read. Item 17.354, that's an order to endorse Walk, Bike, Northampton, the city <coughs> citywide pedestrian and bicycle comprehensive plan for 2017. This is for referral, uh, to refer to the Committee on Community uh, Resources and Committees on Legislative Matters. Motions made to refer, is there a second? Second. I have a, um, why legislative matters? It seems squarely within the jurisdiction of community resources, but is there um, some kind of legislative technical component? That it actually says community resources and legislative matters here. Uh, yeah, and I'm wondering why, why both? Why not just your committee, Councillor? So just a question for the committee. Yep. Um, and the two chairs of the yep. uh, council. The, any sense of? This being pertinent to a legislative matter review. <coughs> this is an ordinance uh, presented by, I, I'm sorry, an order uh, presented by uh, Wayne, who actually would be here to speak to that or if, if you had any questions. But this is actually for referral, so it's not necessary. But does anyone feel a compelling reason for this to go to legislative matters or if we can just process it through uh, community resources? Anyone have any thoughts on this? My, my thought is community resources is sufficient, but I defer to the chair of legislative matters if he wishes to send it there, too. We actually, we're queuing you up for a pretty hefty agenda, actually. Uh, as we get down here, there's this. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. A, lot of things, there's yeah. a lot of things going there. I've not looked at it, so I have no <laughs> idea what's in it. So it would be hard to say one way or the other whether it need to go there or not. But Okay. Well, the Transportation Parking Commission essentially approved it. I mean, it's a... As it says, a yeah, comprehensive if it, high school it, pedestrian plan, so it's not really a It's not a order or an ordinance or anything. It doesn't really make sense for it to go there. I can't, could, well, could it is, I just it is ask, an order, it, so that's. It is an, well, it's an order to approve of a plan. Yeah. Does it contain an appendix with suggested or, legislation or anything like that? It does not contain an appendix with legislation. Okay. Um, the only legislative related piece is one of the criteria for the planning board for issuing special permits and site plans is conformance with the city's comprehensive plan. 
and this would be an element of the comprehensive plan. So it's something the planning board would be looking at when they issue site plans and special permits. Again, it's not yeah. legislation. It doesn't rise to the level of zoning, though. So. Correct. Yeah. It, it does so. become policy guideline, however. But it's not zoning, so it's not 350, well. so. Okay. All right, well, then let's, um, if anyone, if no one has any objection, we'll just refer to uh, community resources. Community resources. Yeah. Is that okay? All right, so this now stands as uh, referral to community resources. Move to refer to community resources. <laughs> Second. Okay, any, any further discussion on referral? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Ordinances, and we got a few. I don't, I don't get to invoke Pam's name much more after this, so okay. <laughs> Item 17.331, this is an ordinance to amend <coughs> 312 110 is regarding the roundhouse parking lot. It's first reading. It uh, has a positive recommendation uh, by the Committee on Legislative Matters. And, <coughs> excuse me, this is upon the recommendation of the mayor. Um, and this is being ordained by the City Council uh, that uh, Section 312. Subsection 312-110 titled Schedule 9 Off-Street Parking Areas be revised and amend off-street parking areas shall be established as follows. And this is delete uh, the roundhouse lot between Old South Street and New South Street and delete also the remainder of spaces in the first two aisles, which are classified as two hours Class 1B. Also, on the roundhouse lot between Old South Street and New South Street, first four spaces closest to Old South Street and Municipal Annex, 30-minute uh, Class 1D category. So those are the deletions and add, round and add roundhouse lot between Old South Street and New South Street, first row of parking spaces, two hours Class 1D. Move approval. Motion's made. Is there a second? Uh, who would like to speak to this? You, you, you well, it's the mayor's ordinance. I mayor, mayor, do you want to speak to this? It's just, uh, this is one of the, um, again, uh, some cleanup that we're doing um, in looking at our lots. And th there's a, a row of 30-minute um, meters, which are kind of a holdover from a bygone era. And the goal is to be able to move everything in the roundhouse lot to the, uh, um, in, in, that, in that area <coughs> to this two-hour class 1B. Uh, which uh, which is just consistent throughout, um, and we don't really have any 30-minute meters anywhere in the city, um, and this would allow us to move away from the meters and move to the to the same you know system. So um, so yeah, it, that's okay. that's what we're doing here. So I think I'm getting that correct. Yeah. So so essentially picking up four spaces that were currently that are currently uh, designated 30-minute spots will become two-hour spots. That's correct. So we're picking up four four longer term parking spaces and it's and it basically as you can see from the it, it basically makes it consistent with the other ones in that aisle or row or whatever right. the terminology is so yeah any other questions at council plan just a procedural question it didn't go to the tpc is there a reason it did it, it did yeah it did. so we gave it a positive recommendation there Okay, good, thank you. Any other questions, discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Okay, passes in first reading. Next up is item 17.288, and this is an ordinance relative to on street parking meter zones. The second reading. This is yeah, related. Yeah, second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. We'll call them back. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Clark? Yes. Councilor Clark? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Okay, that passes in second reading. Also, we have an ordinance. Uh, to amend Chapter 312-110 of the Code Book. This is Item 17.301. Second reading. Move to approve. Second. Seconded. 
further discussion? Once again, this is also cleaning all this up and facilitating uh, the introduction of the new parking system so it's more comprehensive and then expand. Okay, Pam. Councilor Shearer? Is this our last roll call? Yes. It is. This is the last time Pam will be reciting your name <laughs> in monotonous <laughs> alphabetical <laughs> sending <an> alphabetical <laughs> order. Uh, 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 thanks for putting me first, Pam. Yes. It will haunt Shit. her dreams. It will haunt her dreams. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of a touching and wistful moment. Isn't it? it's, kind of <laughs> it's a wistful vote. <laughs> So do it slowly, please. Councilor Ringwell. Yes. Councilor Cardi? Yes. Councilor Blake? Oh, sure. Councilor Cardi? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor <laughs> yes. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. okay. That passes. <coughs> Second reading. Um, next are referrals. Um, I don't know if you want to take them as a group. Or yes. This is, these are all to refer to legislative matters. Um, let me make sure. A up. Until J. J so yeah so items up to J yeah so items um, we got it. I just want to make sure I got it right so item D through I yeah. right now we'll yes. read those but it is the preference to remove them as a okay. so item D is 17.348 this is an ordinance to clarify parking lot design criteria when installing photo uh, voltaic canopies over surface parking lots and again, that's a referral to uh, the Committee on Legislative Matters. Uh, here's one that might appeal to Wayne. Uh, item 17349, it's an ordinance to allow small scale ground mounted photovoltaic uh, arrays in the floodplain. Uh, that's to refer to legislative matters. Item 17.350, this is an uh, ordinance to change the site plan section 350-11.6 to require new construction of a certain size to be solar ready, in quotes. And that's the same referral, 17.351, uh, an ordinance to clarify that large ground mounted arrays fall within the use of the category of private utility if not otherwise spe uh, specifically s specified separately. Item 17.352, this is an ordinance to ensure temporary signs comply with the recent Supreme Court decision to delete a section not part of ordinance and to clarify other aspects of code. And then item 17.353, this is an ordinance eliminating the requirement for special permit when offsite parking spaces are required in lots away from educational facilities They're all in there. which they serve. Uh, any discussion on the referral? No. Nope. All those in favor of referring, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? September. Oh, to September. Uh, because the planning board will be taking them up first, and their meeting is and after your August yeah, meeting. So, so. okay. Mm. Item J. Seventeen point six five. This is an ordinance relative to taxis and vehicles for hire, and this is an update uh, by committee. The, the taxi side. The top. So uh, the you know, on, on legislative matters uh, met earlier this week with uh, Councilor Seawall, who was there with us. And um, based on that meeting, uh, Councilor Seawall was recommending substantial changes to the ordinance as it was referred to legislative matters. And since we have the time between now and our next meeting, which isn't for a month. Um, legislative matters, Councilor Seawall was going to do some more work on it. Legislative matters was going to send it back to community resources because that's where we got it from. 
so that they could review Councilor Seawall's recommendations and then it will go back to legislative matters and all of this can occur before the next council meeting happens. Um, so that's where it is now and Pam, what's up with the timing of this thing? Do we have to... I was just looking that up. So yeah, the, that we, the this is... To committee, you have a certain amount of time in which right. to, to send it back to the city council for a vote. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking to find what that time frame is. We've already exceeded it, so the... the uh, It's just reported now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We reported. We just we've reported as of right now. But it says report. <laughs> so it doesn't so call for doesn't call for a vote. There's right? a definition of so a report so in the rules, which is not. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's more specific than just. We're, we're saying it's still out. We're saying it's still out. Our report is it's still out there. And Councillor Seawall wanted to well, work with it. That doesn't constitute a report. And because we had the time to cycle back to community resources, then back to legislative matters, and still get it back here at our next meeting, which is as soon as it was going to get here anyway, uh, that's where it is. Yeah. That's I mean, my report, and I'm sticking to it. If, if we want, I mean, if, if it's sort of not terribly consequential, we could vote to suspend that rule if we were concerned about it. I mean, I, I, I don't see why. Yeah, I mean, the ordinance itself is on the agenda, so certainly we could. Let's give Pam another vote. You want to give Pam another vote? Well, well that could be a voice vote. <laughs> so. Nevertheless, For the let's just do no, a roll call. Yeah, I'd like that one. Because I was the last. Suspension of rule? Yeah, it's a quick vote to spend the rules yeah, to allow more time. A lot more time for her. Uh, for 17, that's uh, two, two, six, five. Well, suspend the rule, 14. 6.2.6. <laughs> two readings and then suspend the rule. Suspend that rule. <laughs> yeah. Right. The motion's made in second. <laughs> any, any further discussion? Roll call. We're not doing a roll call on this, are we? Right. Council Bidwell. What? Well, yes. Yeah. Someone called for it. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Yes. He said, "Yeah." I said, "Yeah." Sorry. Raise your hand. Yes. Oh, okay. That referral is well played. Um, <laughs> There are no updates from the council president, and uh, we did get our update from the committee chair or the uh, legislative members. Is there information request? Council did what? No, no information request, sorry. But I did have a matter of new business. Of oh, new business? All right, well, that's the next item. What's that? Well, since in a matter of minutes, we will no longer have an administrative assistant. Uh, mm. I was just curious, wanted to inquire, if it's appropriate at this time, what, what our process is <laughs> for um, <laughs> hiring the services of a new administrative assistant for city Well, the challenge isn't as great as it was. There have there been a lot of complicated machinations associated with this because, of course, we weren't able to do anything about filling the vacancy until the vacancy actually occurred. Right. The same case is true here. There was no presumption of who was going to ascend to that position, uh, so there's no job posted. Um, we will move forward with trying to find temporary help. While we, uh, I, Councilor O'Donnell and I are going to work with uh, Glenda over at HR, and we're going to work on focusing in on the job description and then put it out there and see who's interested in filling the position. Uh, Pam, in her capacity as interim, is precluded from doing the work of the administrative assistant, but it does not exclude her from helping, so which she is more than generously offered to do, is to help uh, train and explain the, the, the 
machinations of this elaborate process that she she has been presiding over for these three years. Um, so that that said, I of course sleep very little, have been sleeping very little, thinking about the, inevi the inevitability of this as it became more and more evident. And, and so, yeah, so that's what keeps me up at night. There's not likely to be a replacement for Pam. I think we can say that safely. I think there will be someone who will take this position, and I hope with Pam's assistance will, uh, will be ably serving us. It does leave us in the lurch for a little bit, but fortunately, summer is slow. As you know, there's not a lot of business. I mean, we'll, we will have to have people taking minutes in the uh, meetings that are upcoming. And uh, we're, we're going to have been in conversations with the mayor and with Glenda and HR and with the uh, vice president. So we're, I think we're hopefully between us all, we'll, we'll be able to come up with something at least my, you know, my biggest concern is in the absence of Pam, we're going to be revealed to be complete. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. that, 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 that's my concern as well. Yeah. So I, I, you know, whatever we can do to maintain this illusion, we're going to we're going to do what we can. So. Um, so there we go. That's that's the we now what we're going to do is we trans. I'm going to before I call for the next vote. Um, after the vote, and the vote to adjourn, then, as I said, Council Murphy will administer the oath of office for the city clerk to Pam, and at that point, we take her computer from her, and she 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 becomes the interim, effective tomorrow morning. Okay. So, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Can we get a roll call on this, please? Yes. <laughs> And, and by the oh, rules, we have to honor that. <laughs> yes, and we have to honor that. And, and is that a second as well? Second. Okay. No, no, but there was a motion to adjourn, and I didn't hear a second yet. And there is a call for a roll call. In honor of Pamela. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whenever you're ready, on your time. <laughs> She's getting a claim. Yes. 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 We are adjourned. The final vote. All right, Pam. You ready for this? Where's your family? They, they, they sat through the worst of all. <laughs>
I can't ask you to find a recipe for laser fish. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Pam. You.